friend guard helping it as well. Let's get into game one of round 11. Ryan Haig and Aditya Subramanian. They're both 9-1. and one. The winner of this set is going to get their 10th uh, victory of the weekend. Right away, we got the Raging Bolt, Raging Goat, you might say, sitting across the field from each other as Adi going for that in order to kick things off, of course, with the clear amulet over on the opposing end. It is going to be a Calyrex Ice Rider that is not going to be taking that. Now, Protosynthesis, that's the special attack for Ryan's Raging Bolt. So something a little bit more on the offensive to be boosting things up. Of course, the Calyrex over on the opposing end. It is something that can be stopped in its tracks with something like a fake out on this turn. So you do have to be careful over on Ryan's end. You don't want to be taking unnecessary damage to be kicking things off, especially if you're... This Calyrex can be a huge point in this match. And it's so difficult in this position with two Raging Bolts on the field, because you can only terrestrialize one Pokemon, right? If you want to get out of this kind of mirrored situation where you can hit each other uh, super effectively, then that means maybe your Calyrex Shadow Rider in the back is not able to terrestrialize later on. And looking at this, and I end up a Draco Meteor from the one over on Adi's end. There wouldn't be too many good switch ins here. So a Protect to be keeping the Raging Bolt safe. Just the double Protect. Good pass the Fake Out. Definitely super, super nice. Fake that turn. Get that out of the way and also be eyeing up what Adi had in mind. The Draco Meteor not going to be able to do anything this time around. Yeah, good information gained from Ryan on this turn to see what Adi was prioritizing. He was going for that mirror hit, going for the Draco Meteor into the opposing Raging Bolt. So now that Ryan is aware that, you know, Adi kind of is valuing the Raging Bolt as a, a higher threat in the moment, how should he adjust? And now that Protect has been burned on both of these slots as well, I mean, even with Ryan having that information that the Draco Meteor was clicked over on Adi's end, still nothing is really too safe from that. You can be pressuring back with a hit from your own Raging Bolt, since you do have access to the Draco Meteor as well. But if we do see something like the Terrestrialization coming out from Adi's end, he does have the Assault Vest as well. So we'd be able to take the hit a little bit better than the Booster Energy version over on Ryan's end of the board. Terrestrialization is going to be kicking it off in this turn number two. And that is going to be the Calyrex Ice Rider going into that fire type, making sure that it's not going to be taking too much damage. Yeah, now if Adi targets a Flare Blitz into that slot, it will be resisted damage instead of super effective. But Draco hits onto Ryan's Raging Bolt. And he does not have enough special defense to take that with the critical hit. You will gladly trade two stages of special attack for the one hit KO. Adi has the Raging Goat, Ryan the Raging Woat. They're going to be KO'd. Knockoff going to be hitting into the Calyrex. The Terra Fire would have been great to be making sure something like a will o -Wisp doesn't go, go off. But the knockoff to get rid of that clear amulet. Now you can't be limiting the stats, but look at that huge hit. Onto the Raging Bolt over on the opposing end. Yeah, both Raging Bolts getting knocked out from full HP here on this turn. And that's a big trade for Ryan because he hardly takes any damage and gets the attack boost. At this point, you do get the attack boost, but losing that clear amulet, there is the potential of a Arden shot into that slot or any pivots coming back out. And the Raging Bolt going down over on Ryan's end of the board gives way for this Pelipper to be hitting the field here. This is a Pokemon that has access to that wide guard, making sure that something like this Calyrex Shadow Rider on Adi's end of the board, you have to start playing these games because Astro Barrage would be able to deal a good amount of damage into both of these Pokemon. But if that Pelipper goes ahead and clicks that wide guard, well, all of a sudden, that horse gets to do absolutely nothing. Draining Kiss is your other move of choice here, and that's going to be significantly less damage coming on out. And that's not really a position that you want for your Restricted. But if you're also clicking a move that doesn't do much, and if Pelipper wants to go for, well, literally anything else, since a Weather Ball or a Hurricane definitely does its fair share as well into that match, it's also where you can start falling behind. Yeah, I think it's a really tough turn for Adi to decide because you know you can't really set up. You don't have the you don't have the time available to click Calm Mind multiple times and boost the damage. And you can't safely click Astro Barrage, as you mentioned, because Pelipper at any time can click Wide Guard and negate all of your damage. But the friendly Clefairy will be on the field for Adi now, revealing his fourth Pokemon in this matchup. Thanks to the friend guard, he's gonna take a little bit less damage on the Calyrex. And that's definitely a nice way to be negating some of the damage coming on out. Your Incineroar is in the back, so you can pivot it in for an Intimidate. Bring that back down to neutral, and the Friend Guard will help you out on this turn. 
Draining Fizz will be the move of choice, and with the Terrestrialization will be boosted, the first hit into the Pelipper. And that looks like that will certainly be a two-hit KO, so the Pelipper is in a tough spot. If you want to click wide guard the following turn, you would get knocked out from a Draining Kiss. Weather Ball brings Clefairy down under half HP, and now the plus one from Calyrex Ice Rider is enough to take out Clefairy, get another Chilling May boost. And no spread damage move coming on out, but still going to be able to reap the benefits as that as Belliver goes for the attack and set in the double of into the Cliff Fairy. I mean, you're a friend to your partner Pokemon, but you're definitely not a friend to the Pokemon on the other end, and they dealt with that endedly. Now, you do get an Intimidate down on the Calyrex, but since it did get that Glacial Lance KO, it is still at a plus one. You have Fake Out over on this turn. Pelipper doesn't have Protect, so you can be targeting into that Pokemon if you are expecting that Calyrex to be protecting. And Pelipper, I think, which should be something that you get rid of ASAP if you want to be going for something that's a little bit more damage boosting down this. A setup on this turn, sure, you're not really eyeing up getting a special defense boost that would help against the Calyrex, but it can help your damage output since you are going to be naturally speedier than the rest of the Pokemon on Ryan's end to set you up with success for the rest of the game. Right, and the more damage that you output on this move like Draining Kiss, the more health you would be able to recover. But Belper clicking wide guard, so he, Ryan anticipating an Astro Barrage on this turn. Fake out goes towards the Calyrex slot, not doing any damage for Calyrex for Ryan this turn. Now Calmine boosting the Shadow Rider special attack attack and special defense by one stage. There's the flinch from the fake out, and now you're plus one on special attack and special defense. You're still super fast, so you can get that KO on Pelipper before it uh, can attack. The thing is, is your Shadow Rider has already taken so much damage, and if you're attacking into the Pelipper with it on this turn, you are still at risk of getting KO'd by the Calyrex over onto the opposing end. Since Draining Kiss into that Fire-type Terrasalized Calyrex, even with a plus one, isn't going to be the significant damage that you would need. And knowing that there is the threat of the wide guard on the other end, I feel like that just loses you the game on the spot as well. If you do protect and take care of the Pelipper, that is a dangerous position where, hey, this Pelipper can fire off a Weather Ball and take care of the Incineroar. So it's a really difficult line where you have to go down, and we're going right down to the wire with making this decision. Pelipper decides wide guard is the choice. Second turn in a row, stopping a potential Astral Barrage, but Adi is not going to fall for it. Instead, we'll click the Terra Fairy boosted Draining Kiss, knocking out Pelipper here on this turn. You won't recover too much HP since Pelipper was already down to about 40%, so it's not a lot of HP remaining to recover, so we'll see if this Glacial Lance is going to be uh, enough. You get another special attack increase on your end. Parting shot from Incineroar lowering the attack, because remember earlier on, Knockoff got rid of the clear amulet, so that's huge to try to lower it, but Cowards clicks trick room twisting the dimensions instead with that parting shot you're now just at a neutral but being able to make sure that your final pokemon the amoogus coming out from the back can wreak havoc in this trick room as well this now plus two special attack calyrex shadow rider won't be able to offer all of that pressure because it is something with the pelipper being gone if it was the fastest thing these astrobrages surely can just run through the rest of this game now you did get to recover a little bit of health because of that draining kiss but even at neutral the calyrex is going to be doing a decent amount of damage and amoongus does have the ability to kind of redirect you are looking at an incinera on the other end with the safety goggles so you can eye up maybe trying to protect and parting shot into the calyrex again but that is still a lot of damage that you can be taking, especially since it can just decide to fire off a high horsepower into Incineroar and start trying to deal damage in that way. Yeah, I was going to say, there are some, time, some Calyrex Ice Riders that don't have high, high horsepower as their second attack, so it'd be a worse spot for Ryan if he didn't have that uh, attack available to hit Incineroar super effectively, but you have to feel super strong on Ryan's end. You have a Moongus at full HP, four more turns of Trick Room for your two slow Pokemon. There's the high horsepower, super effective into Incineroar, and he gets knocked out before you get any more parting shots. That's another Chili Nay boost for this Calyrex. Yeah, it's safe to say why this Calyrex Ice Rider has been the one of choice. His eye is going to be throwing into the towel for the game one and has to figure out where in this game, too, he can get 5% accurate move, though. I don't know if I can get on board. Hey, he probably clicked it once or twice this weekend <laughs> through 10 rounds of Swiss. We'll see if he can click it one more. There is the Clefairy to lead this time around right next to Calyrex Shadow Rider for Adi compared to Raging Bolt and Calyrex Ice Rider on Ryan's side.
something that I definitely like it kind of leading as opposed to the swap in. The swap in, I got KO'd by the Weather Ball, the Glacial Lance, and that just started activating the Snowball coming out from the Calyrex Ice Rider on the other end. Protosynthesis coming on through again. Or again, the special attack. There is a way that you can be pressuring a little bit with that Raging Bolt since you do have access to priority. But if there is the follow me over on the opposing end, then the Pokemon they'd be taking a lot of very unnecessary damage. As well, if you're staring down these Pokemon and you don't feel through threatened on this turn, you can just try and go set up, but no, no way. He hasn't clicked it in, so we're not gonna get too excited yet, but it might be uh might be pretty, oh, he, no. he locked it in. Okay, <laughs> Ryan has no idea what's about to come in his direction. So if he as, hits this? Yeah, so as Sierra mentioned, Sing is a 55% accurate move, but it puts your Pokemon to sleep. It's like Spore, but way worse. And Ryan <laughs> will terrestrialize his Calyrex yet again into that fire typing, getting rid of that ghost weakness that would come from an Astro Barrage hit. Uh, Adi on his end will click Calm Mind, so this is really nice for him since Raging Bolt does so much damage. Boost his special defense up one stage. Clefairy gets paralyzed, though, so you have to break through paralysis and hit a 55% accurate move. You might not even get the chance because Glacial Lance is so strong. Clefairy gets knocked out here on turn one. He doesn't even get to sing his swan song. Again, with the sing, as cool as it would have been able to see that fire off and as unfortunate as it is to be taken down by that chilling nay, you got that Calm Mind boost over onto your Calyrex Shadow Rider. And there is no point in clicking that Follow Me because we saw the Raging Bolt naturally targeted into it anyways. And I, if you could redirect Lance, both of the Glacial yeah. Lances your way, that would be a little too broken. Now you have an option of bringing in a Pokemon that can pressure a lot more. And the Urshifu Rapid Strike, now that you've gotten the Terrestrialization out of the Calyrex, there is no redirection over on the opposing end, and that can be dangerous. Even if they're already up a Thunderclap on the opposing end, it is Focus Sash over onto the Surshifu. So you would be able to at least revive that hit on that one HP. And the amount of damage that you could be dealing back out with the Surging Strikes as well as the Astro Barrage is huge. So no wonder that Calyrex is getting out of there. Yeah, it does not want to take any damage from Urshifu. These are two really powerful Pokemon on the field right now for Adi. So Amoongus is, is a nice switch in because of that Rocky Helmet. So if Urshifu targets that slot, if Amoongus was even around on the field, it's going to get Oko from the Calm Mind boosted Calyrex Shadow Rider. And that's another Grimnade boost. So it's going to be two plus two special attack. Surging Strikes, you're critting every time. Sure, it's resisted, but Rage Bolt's at such low HP that Ryan is, has lost his Pokemon here. And oh, that's such a rough turn for Ryan. That's a massive amount of damage from Calyrex. That turn just completely turns the tides of the battle. The Amoongus coming on in to try and keep that Calyrex safe. Now Pelipper coming back out. I mean, sure, you can shut down the Astro Barrage with the Wide Guard, yeah. but you've now set the rain and the Urshifu on the opposing end is so much damage. You're just going to be boosting that. You're already, we're going to just do a heap load of damage into the Calyrex. And you can't take care of this Urshifu in one hit because of that Focus Sash. Yeah, and the other thing with Pelipper, it has to choose one move, right? You either you either have to wide guard or go for a supportive move, try to help Glacial Lance out. It's in a really tough spot. And at this point, we are just going to be straight flexing in this game too. Terrestrialization coming out this Stellar Urshifu. Usually you see the single strike Urshifu using Stellar Terra and the rapid strike using Terra Poison, Terra Steel, something defensive. No, all out damage from Stellar Terra. Is it even going to get the chance to attack? Yes, obviously Pelipper hangs on. Calyrex no longer weak to the Astral Barrage, so he doesn't get KO'd either. Making sure that you're doing the most amount of damage since you are the Sash. Instead of the Mystic Water, you got the Rain, you got the Stellar Terra. Calyrex on so low health taken down immediately. The only thing now left in Ryan's corner is that Pelipper. One HP and a dream that I think is about to come really crashing to an end. Yeah, definitely might be a, might be a nightmare compared to one HP and a dream, but he does bring the Urshifu down to its focus S, so that's, uh, that's nice, a little, bit of, a little bit of damage, but obviously Adi has, uh, even without Clefairy singing, right, getting that opportunity, the battle's gonna be canceled, and we're gonna into game three here between Adi and Ryan, Raging Bolt, Calyrex, Ice Rider for Ryan's lead and Calyrex Shadow Rider Incineroar for Adi. At this point, not going to be a Clef Fairy to be kicking things off. Instead, this Incineroar, even though it doesn't have the ability to help its partner quite as well, it can in a different sort of way, which is now having the fake out pressure over onto the opposing end of the field here. Stop one of these Pokemon in its tracks. Again, 
Intimidate not going to be able to affect the Ice Rider on the opposing end thanks to that clear amulet. And with the ability to lock down one of these Pokemon, it can just be another Calm Mind over on Audi's end. You aren't going to have that same amount of sponging up damage thanks to the Clefairy not being there, but at least making sure that one of these Pokemon can't attack could be great. Yeah, and we saw in game one that Incineroar does have the knockoff to get rid of the clear amulet. Eventually, maybe try to preserve Incineroar later on in the match. Use those Intimidates, use those party shots if you can get rid of that crucial held item on Ryan's end. But all three games, Ryan has understood the assignment. I'm here. I'm 9 and 1 because of my Calyrex Ice Rider. Going to terrestrialize it into a fire type. Calm Mind boosting a Shadow Rider, special attack, and special defense on this turn. So if Raging Bolt goes into that slot, it's going to do less damage. But no, it's towards the Incineroar. Pretty much exactly half HP, no paralysis this time, so Incineroar gets to swap out. Parting shot into the Raging Bolt, so it does less going on as a Calm Mind set up from the Calyrex Shadow Rider, and a chance now to pivot out into something else. If you do have that, um, the uh, Clefairy in the back, you could bring it out to sponge up damage from a Glacial Lance. Since Ryan didn't go and protect on that turn, Urshifu would also take the hit pretty well, but you wouldn't want to be breaking that Sash for free, especially when you're staring down a Raging Bolt. So Clefairy is a great friend to make a reappearance. Glacial Lance coming on out. Now you'll be able to soak up this hit a little bit better than before, and Clefairy hangs on through the turn. Yeah, the other time, Clefairy got double targeted every turn. So now, this time when you only get hit by one attack, your, your Clefairy's looking a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, this is super nice. And now that you have this Calm Mind boost and you're not really staring down a threat over on the opposing end, this is where you can again play a mind game with the, hey, am I going to be following me? Or even just something like this Helping Hand. If you're a plus one Calyrex Shadow Rider, you already do so much damage. A Helping Hand here, this is something that can start to obliterate the opposing end of the board. And here we go. Calm Mind boost, Helping Hand boosted Calyrex Shadow Rider on this turn. A massive amount of damage that it can output if Ryan allows it. No protect from the Ice Rider. So Raging Bolt's not going to take any damage. But here is the Astral Barrage into Calyrex on the other side. The opposing horse, not enough for a one-hit KO. Brings it down into the red. Now the Glacial Lance in response. Clefairy's at half HP. Friend Guard is so strong, keeps both of them around. The Raging Bolt would have been taking so much damage to protect through the turn to make sure that it can actually survive through the turn. And the Calyrex, since that was a spread damage move, of course, isn't going to be KO'd on this turn, but you're still in a really tricky situation. And normally when you have a priority move on something like the Raging Bolt, the threat of a Clap is absolutely immense. But if there is a follow me over on the opposing end, you would be redirected. And since you wouldn't then be attacking into an attacking Pokemon, all of a sudden the move is going to be for naught. So the speed over on this Pokemon is going to be great. So seeing the Protect coming up from the other end, not too much of a surprise. Yeah, Calyrex does not want to get knocked out. Ryan understands it's so important for him and his win condition here in Game 3. Clefairy does become the center of attention with that Follow Me, which would redirect an attack away from Calyrex and Raging Bull, even if it had a chance to attack, uh, wouldn't be able to hit Calyrex. Instead, Raging Bull will be down to, you know, around 25, 30% of its HP remaining. Here is the Thunderbolt of of course, Clefairy so low on HP, more than enough for the KO. But this does allow Adi to bring either his Incineroar in on this turn or that Focus Sash Stel uh, Stellar Tower or Shifu. And if you bring out the Incineroar here, you do have that fake out then pressure over on the opposing end. So again, a way to be stopping the Thunderclap that could be targeting into your Calyrex Shadow Rider on this turn. And if you get the chance to just hit an Astro Barrage, especially knowing that this Calyrex Shadow, um, the Ice Rider, are too many horses out yeah, here. Yeah, too many. The, the other one, the slower one, the Ice one has just protected. That could be a really good hit into it with the Astro Barrage. And even if you want to be bringing out the Urshifu, this is something that still pressures a lot over onto the opposing end, but it does mean that you are opening up the possibility for the priority move over on the opposing end of the field. Yeah, definitely a tough spot because you can understand it with the security focus sash gives Urshifu, you know, Thunderclap is, Thunder is not going to be able to one-hit KO you, but it still is super effective, so it's opting for the safer play with Intimidate and a fake-out option. Where it is a safer play is that you do get to stop one Pokemon on this turn. Where it's maybe not so much is the Raging Bolt here, since it isn't the Assault Vest, can just protect through this turn. All of a sudden, you have burnt your fake-out, and you can just go for the Thunderclap on the next turn. And that is still just going to be pretty safe um, across the board here since the Calyrex is so low on its health. The eyeing up for the Draining Kiss, if 
that's not going to be really too much damage that you're going to be doing because the Calyrex is already so low, which means it's also mo the most that you are healing up. But considering you do have that special defense boost, any way to try and be mounting and bringing up that special defense. So it is going to be difficult considering the booster energy on the opposing end. Protect the... That's going to be kicking off the turn. Yeah, this is a crucial turn for Ryan if he wants to come back in this match. Fake out goes into the protect, so Incinero does not stop any attacks on this turn. But now Shadow Rider into Calyrex because he's a fire type. He resists the draining kiss and just barely hangs on with just enough HP to get a Glacial Lance in response, KOing Shadow Rider and bringing Incinero down really low. You needed that KO to be kicking things off in such a low base power move. Well, that is the Chili Knee. That is your Restricted Gone, and that is now limited to two final Pokemon over on Audi's end. Hasn't even made a, hasn't made his way through the lead coming out from Ryan. If there was something like that Terra into the very type, you could have picked it up, but it, you'd still just then be using your Terra just for that sliver of health. But even looking at it, it could have been an option to maybe try and be stopping that. This Urshifu does still have the focus at. You can still pressure some damage, but considering we've known that the Amoongus was a Pokemon over on Ryan's end, that could even be a swap in here. The Thunderclap still steals so much. It's still just a tough blow coming out. Yeah, what a crucial survival from Ryan's Calyrex Ice Rider on that turn. The Terra, the Terra Fire hasn't really been too relevant for most of the set. He's using all three games. It really is to stop Will-O-Wisp on Incineroar's end so he can't get burned. But really, the fire typing from the low base power Draining Kiss was so crucial. Thunderclap brings her Shifu down to his Focus Sash. Just one HP remaining on Adi's end. Not a lot of hit points to work with between the two Pokemon combined. Close combat towards Raging Bolt to get that KO. Definitely fine lowering your defenses when you only have one HP remaining. And at this point, the restricted over on the opposing end of field, it is going to be taken down as well. The knockoff as liver of health is going to be evening the Pokemon count to a piece for these trainers here in this game too. This will be the first opportunity to see what is in the back for Ryan. Historically, it has been this Amoongus, which I think is just very problematic here, and even something like this Eliper. But we'll get the confirmation in half a second. There is an adjustment. There is Shifu, his own Rapid Strike coming on out. And yeah, it might be uh, it might be even in the Pokemon count, but not all things are created equal when <laughs> Adi's Pokemon are so low HP already. And even just in speed tiers of these Pokemon, Choice Garf with the Urshifu over on the opposing end, staring down these two full health Pokemon. No surprise here. Yeah, Ryan Haig with a convincing comeback in this series and the fire.